on today's episode of Bible Education, what was the actual forbidden fruit on the tree of knowledge in the Garden of Eden? Was it an apple as we have all been indoctrinated to believe? No, the true forbidden fruit as told to us in scripture is grapes. And we can confirm this by reading three separate books. The first book of Enoch, chapter 32. The Apocalypse of Abraham, chapter 22, verse 5 through 9. As well as the third book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 9 through 17. Now, let's start with the Apocalypse of Abraham, chapter 22, verse 5 through 9. If you're not familiar with the Apocalypse of Abraham, the book begins with him having many arguments with his father for worshipping idols that he is making with his hands, such as statues of wood and stone. Eventually, Abraham leaves his father's home and he meets the angel Yoel, where he is revealed many things and he is eventually taken into the tenth heaven into the throne room to meet God himself. Now the floor of the throne room is made of crystal, just like the book of Enoch tells us. And in the apocalypse of Abraham, this floor is referred to as the mirror of the world, where any point in time of our historical timeline from the beginning to the end can be seen and accessed by God, as well as the other nine levels of heaven. Now God shows Abraham past events and future events in the mirror of the world. One of those past events is the Garden of Eden. Now, let's get into the Apocalypse of Abraham, chapter 22, verse 5 through 9. The Apocalypse of Abraham, chapter 22, a vision of sin and paradise, the mirror of the world. And he said to me, Look now beneath thy feet at the firmaments and understand the creation foreshadowed in this expanse, the creatures existing on it and the age prepared according to it. And I saw beneath the surfaces of the feet of the sixth heaven and what was therein, and then the earth and its fruits and what moved upon it and its animate beings and the power of its men and the ungodliness of their souls and their righteous deeds and the lower regions, and the perdition therein, the abyss, and its torments. I saw there the sea, and its islands, and its monsters, and its fishes, and Leviathan, and his dominion, and his camping ground, and his caves, and the world which lay upon him, and his movements, and the destruction of the world on his account. I saw their streams, and the rising of their waters, and their windings, and I saw there the garden of Eden, and its fruits, the source of the stream issuing from it, and its trees and their bloom, and those who behaved righteously. And I saw therein their foods and blessedness. And I saw there a great multitude, men and women and children, of them on the right side of the picture, and half of them on the left side of the picture. And I said, O eternal mighty one, what is this picture of the creatures? And he said to me, This is my will with regard to those who exist in the divine world council. And it seemed well pleasing before my sight. And then afterwards, I gave commandment to them through my word. And it came to pass whatever I had determined to be was already planned before in this picture. And it stood before me, eerie, it was created as thou hast seen. And I said, O Lord, mighty and eternal, who are the people in this picture, on this side and on that? And he said to me, These which are on the left side are the multitude of the peoples which have formerly been in existence and which are after thee destined, some for judgment and restoration and others for vengeance and destruction at the end of the world. But these which are on the right side of the picture, they are the people set apart for me of the peoples with Azazel. These are they whom I have ordained to be born of thee and to be called my people. Now look again in the picture. Who is it who seduced Eve? And what is the fruit of the tree? Thou will know what there shall be and how it shall be to thy seed among the people at the end of the days of the age. And so far as thou canst not understand, I will make known to thee, for thou art well pleasing in my sight, and I will tell thee what is kept in my heart. And I looked into the picture, and mine eyes ran to the side of the Garden of Eden, and I saw there a man, very great in height, and fearful in breadth, incomparable in aspect, embracing a woman, 
who likewise approximated to the aspect and shape of the man. And they were standing under a tree of the garden of Eden. And the fruit of this tree was like the appearance of a bunch of grapes of the vine. And behind the tree was standing as it were a serpent in form, having hands and feet like a man's and wings on its shoulder, six on the right and six on the left. And they were holding the grapes of the tree in their hands, and both were eating it, whom I had seen embracing. And I said, Who are these mutually embracing? Or who is this who is between them? Or what is the fruit they are eating? O oh, mighty eternal one. And he said, This is the human world. This is Adam, and this is their desire upon the earth. This is Eve. But he who is between them representeth ungodliness, their beginning on the way to perdition even Azazel. And I said, O eternal mighty one, why hast thou given to such power to destroy the generation of men and their works upon the earth? And he said to me, they who will do evil and know how much I hated it and those who do it over them, I gave him power to be beloved of them. And I answered and said, O eternal mighty one, Wherefore hast thou willed to effect that evil should be desired in the hearts of men, since thou indeed art angered over that which was willed by thee at him who is doing what is unprofitable in thy counsel? So as we see, the apocalypse of Abraham confirms the forbidden fruit on the tree of knowledge in the Garden of Eden was not apples, it was in fact grapes. Now let's go into even deeper detail by covering the first book of Enoch, chapter 32. The book of Enoch, chapter 32, the Garden of Eden. After these fragrant odors, as I looked toward the north over the mountains, I saw seven mountains full of choice nard, fragrant trees, cinnamon and pepper. Far from there, I went over the summits of all these mountains, far towards the east of the earth and passed above the Erythrean Sea. And I went far from it and passed over the angel Zotiel, and I came to the garden of righteousness, Eden. I saw from afar off trees more numerous than these trees, and two great trees. They are very beautiful, glorious, and magnificent. The tree of knowledge whose holy fruit they ate and knew great wisdom. That tree is in height like the fir, and its leaves are like the carob tree, and its fruit is like grapes very beautiful, and the fragrance of the tree penetrates afar. Then I said, how beautiful is the tree, and how glorious to look upon. Then the holy angel Raphael, who was with me, answered me and said, this is the tree of wisdom of which your old father and your aged mother, Adam and Eve, who were before you, have eaten. And they learned wisdom, and their eyes were open, and they knew that they were naked, and that they were driven out of the garden. So as we see, both Abraham and Enoch, two very important figures in the Bible, both confirm that the forbidden fruit on the tree of knowledge was not an apple, it was grapes. Now Enoch does refer to the fruit as being holy, which is kind of off because we're told it's forbidden and it caused sin. How can it be holy? Number one is set in motion the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy that he would die and save us from that mistake Adam and Eve made. He resurrected, which means we will all resurrect. When he resurrected, Adam and Eve also resurrected and were taken into heaven. Now, we have one more book to cover, which is the third book of Baruch. Now, if you don't know who Baruch is, read the book of Jeremiah. In certain chapters, he is Jeremiah's personal scribe who writes down Jeremiah's visions. Baruch also wrote five books attributed to his name. The first book of Baruch can be found in any Catholic Bible. The second, third, fourth, and fifth are books that were simply ignored and never added to the Bible. Some books were taken out like Enoch and other books were simply ignored and never put in the Bible like the Apocalypse of Abraham and the five books of Baruch. Now, Let's get into the third book of Baruch. 
The third book of Baruch begins with Baruch weeping at the gates of Jerusalem during the fall of the city in 70 AD. As he's praying and weeping and crying out to God, God sends the angel of powers to reveal to him the five levels of heaven. The third book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 5 through 9. And I said, I pray thee, show me which is the tree that led Adam astray. And the angel said to me, it is the vine which the angel Samuel planted, where the Lord was angry, and he cursed him and his plant. Well, also on this account, he did not permit Adam to touch it. And therefore, the devil, being envious, deceived him through his vine. And I, Baruch, said, Since also the vine has been the cause of such great evil, and is under judgment of the curse of God, and was the destruction of the first created, how is it now so useful? And the angel said, Thou askest right. When God caused the deluge upon the earth and destroyed all flesh and 409,000 giants and the water rose 15 cubits above the highest mountains, then the water entered into paradise and destroyed every flower, but it removed wholly without the bounds the shoot of the vine and cast it outside. And when the earth appeared out of the water and Noah came out of the ark, he began to plant of the plants which he found, but he found also the shoot of the vine and he took it and was reasoning with himself. What then is it? And I came and spake to him the things concerning it. And he said, shall I plant it? Or what shall I do, since Adam was destroyed because of it? Let me not also meet with the anger of God because of it. And saying these things, he prayed that God would reveal to him what he should do concerning it. And when he had completed the prayer, which lasted 40 days, and having besought many things and wept, he said, Lord, I entreat thee to reveal to me what I shall do concerning this plant. But God sent his angel, Sarasael, and said to him, Arise, Noah, and plant the shoot of the vine. For thus saith the Lord, its bitterness shall be changed into sweetness, and its curse shall become a blessing, that which is produced from it shall become the blood of God. And as through it the human race obtained condemnation, so again through Jesus Christ the Emmanuel will they receive in him the upward calling and the entry into paradise. Now therefore, O Baruch, that as Adam through this very tree obtained condemnation and was divested of the glory of God, so also the men who now drink insatiably the wine which is begotten of it, transgress worse than Adam and are far from the glory of God and are surrendering themselves to the eternal fire for no good comes through it. For those who drink it to surfeit do these things. Neither does a brother pity his brother, nor a father his son, nor children their parents. But from the drinking of wine come all evils, such as murderers, adulterers, fornications, perjuries, thefts, and such like. And nothing good is established by it. So as we conclude this Bible study, we can 100% confirm that the forbidden fruit on the tree of knowledge and the garden of Eden was in fact grapes and not an apple. Now we have observed the apocalypse of Abraham, the book of Enoch, as well as the third book of Baruch. All three men are very important, prominent figures in the Bible. Abraham is so important that all Jews in all 12 tribes descend from him. Enoch is so important that he didn't have to die, that God took him straight into heaven and turned him into an angel. Baruch is so important that he helped write the book of Jeremiah as well as write five books attributed to his name. Now to some Christians you may feel these books are not in the Bible and you would be correct. At the same time you would be completely wrong because the Bible, the word itself is a Greek word which comes from the word biblios which means the books, a collection of books or a library of books. So the Holy Bible would translate into the Holy Books or the Holy Library. Why are they holy? Because they contain the Word of God, which is the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy. All these books are hyperlinked together, written in totally different times and eras in our historical timeline. History itself split these men apart, yet their books are so well connected that they keep the spirit of prophecy very much alive, just like the actual books we have in the Bible. If you have a King James, you have 66 books. 
If you have the Catholic Bible, you have 73 books. In reality, the Bible should look like an encyclopedia collection, multiple volumes, multiple teachings, many, many books. Now, as we end this video, I would like to lead you in prayer as Jesus Christ himself told us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we have all gained eternal life. We must all go into the world and spread the good news.